In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. We're world class, Al. We answer fitness and health questions, and these are asked by our audience. So we pick some questions, and we answer them on this podcast. But the way we open the episode is with a 45-minute introductory portion. This is where we talk about current events. We bring up studies. Uh, we talk about our lives. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. So let me give you the rundown of this whole episode. We start out by talking about black belts in martial arts versus world-class martial artists. There's yeah. a big difference there, which led us to talk about Bruce Lee hmm. and his legendary fight with Wong Jack. Uh, apparently, there was a, hmm. a, an actual fight that happened between the two of them. Um, and One it, was using the Wong methods. Dang, that's pretty good. Am I right? Then we talked about Cracker Jacks. Oh, that's offensive. Did they change the name? Uh, then we talk about Chris D'Elia, uh, he was a comedian I thought was hilarious. There's news coming out that he might just be a terrible creep, uh, but there's more stuff coming out. He might not. We'll see. Th which led us to talk about Epstein, the world's creepiest, oh, most disgusting person. That is a bona fide creep. He didn't kill himself. Then we talk about aliens. Uh, there's probably aliens out there. Some new studies uh, show that the odds are much higher than we thought before. Uh, which led us to talk about Magic Spoon cereal. Yeah. Um, it's high-protein, no-sugar cereal that tastes amazing. No joke. Flavors that are either fruity, chocolate, peanut butter, birthday cake. It's cereal like when you were a kid, and it's made with high-quality milk and whey protein. Again, no sugar at all. I'm not joking. A decent serving of the cereal will give you almost 30 grams of of high quality protein with it's no alchemy. sugar. Anyhow, look, Magic Spoon is a company that sponsors of us. If you want to get a discount, this is what you got to do. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. You'll get free shipping. There's a discount automatically applied. By the way, it's 100% happiness guaranteed. If you don't like it, you get a full refund. No questions asked. Then we talk about Adam's ribs. No, not Adam in Genesis, the story of the Bible, but rather <laughs> Adam, the, Sh the Schaefer, the host, he made ribs from ButcherBox like reference though. in a, it wasn't a crock pot. It was a, what was that called? Instapot. 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 The meat fell right off the bone. ButcherBox, by the way, is a company that delivers high quality meat to your door. Uh, they specialize in grass fed meats um, and the prices are amazing. Again, it's delivered to your door. You don't have to go to the grocery store and deal with all that stuff. Right now, they just opened back up. They were totally out for a long time, but now you can get on a short wait list. Here's what you got to do. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll be, they're welcoming new customers right now. Use the code mind pump, um, and you'll get a discount on your order. Uh, and then we got into answering some of the questions. The first question, this person notices that their form is breaking down when they're doing high rep exercises but they don't want to lower weight. What do they do? Do they get better results or do they appease their ego? We answer that question. Hmm. The next one, this person says, look, um, I like HIT training. That's high intensity interval training. Uh, I think they're using the MAPS HIT program at the moment, but they don't want their body to adapt too much to it. So they want to know how to alternate it in with traditional resistance training. The next question, this person says, look, I don't want to cut or bulk. I just want to maintain how do I do that? And the final question, this person wants to know if we think food stamps should be banned from use on junk food. Also, I mentioned HIT before, high-intensity interval training. Our special, extremely effective HIT program is called MAPS HIT, and it's 50% off. Huge, huge discount. Now, this program comes with three levels, so you can go novice, intermediate, advanced. It's done with weights. It's not cardio, so it's a weight training-based HIT program, which is great for metabolism, of course, burns lots of calories. You get you don't get the muscle loss associated with lots of cardio. It's a very, very effective calorie burning program. Of course, the program comes with everything you need to follow it. So exercise demos and blueprints, everything you need. It's like having your own personal trainer on your computer. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapshit.com. That's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com and use the code Hit 50. That's H I I T five zero, no space for the discount. Exactly. <laughs> we have a sales call line. Like, can can I do the, uh, like, you know, we have to wait. Like, I'll just, like, do the music up. in the music. Back yeah. Hey, for hey. You to wait. Like, you as you're, like, 
you know, on hold. Yeah. Are we good, Doug? Beep, boop, yeah. beep, did I ever tell you? Did beep, I ever tell you? Beep, beep, boop. Do this with your kids, I'm Justin. Just They'll love this. You guys ever get uh, telemarketing calls on your phone and you can see it, right? It says, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So I do that with my kids. I'll get it and then I'll answer it on speakerphone, and then just have fun, see if my ki- how, you know make my kids laugh. Yeah. I did that once. Hmm. So I got, I answered it. Hello, and they're like, "Hi, is uh?" And I always know because. First yeah. off, I see the number, and no one can say my name. Is, is this Mr. DeStefano? Is Sal DeStefano yeah. here? And I'm yeah. like, yeah, absolutely. Can you hold for a second? They're like, yeah. okay. And then I go, mm, 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 mm. And my kids are in the background <laughs> cracking up. <laughs> yeah. And then they have a good time. Yeah. Dude, did you see uh, the guy outside yesterday, Adam? I did. I saw the story. Oh, I forgot about that guy. I saw the story. I saw you guys getting all fired up. We have no, we have tinted we have tinted mirror nah. windows or whatever. And so people like to look at themselves in it when they walk by. Yeah. And there was a dude like full on mask and everything. Yeah, he had a backpack with like a boom box. <clears throat> yeah. And he was like doing some weird stuff. So Justin was just yeah, I was jamming with I'm him. Jamming, you know, like I mean, I felt like he was like mentally like hyping himself up for some something sh- shenanigans. You know that Rachel saves those, right? You guys know that, right? Yeah, they're on the they're on the highlights of the IG story page. So on the IG, the yeah. uh, my, the main one, she mm-hmm. she highlights uh, all the characters that come yeah, by, all the ones that we've done. Studio. She's been collecting them. Pre- it's pretty funny. I went through actually not that long ago just to see like how many she has, and there's quite a few people that she's caught. That's great. Dancing Dude, that, in front of yeah, the that mirror. guy was a little. Uh, suspect. I saw a, a woman, and she. It was questionable if she was homeless or not, uh, just by the way she appeared. So I don't know. Pretty large. She walked in front of the mirror, and then she looked in the mirror, and she was looking at her teeth, and then she pulled her pants open. So I, she didn't pull them down. She pulled them open. Wow. Put her hand down. Oh. Scratched something. Ye. Pulled her hand back out, and then <laughs> sniffed I, it. Yep. No. <laughs> yes, she did. A check, huh? Just a little quality control. She what? did. She, she did know. a smell. She cares. Yeah. Oh, like, you know, what did I eat better again? than someone who doesn't <laughs> care. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's right. So gross. <laughs> yeah. It's the most <laughs> disgusting thing. When I saw it, it's I was like, like a fish market. Oh. Oh. oh, you make it worse, Justin. I, I have to. <laughs> too far, bro. It was already. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's never too far. I'm gonna far. call you Doug. Yeah, yeah, I know. Doug, <laughs> Doug is too far. I have to represent Doug, yeah. for, for sure. Dude, I was watching this video uh, yesterday on the internet. <clears throat> um, I sound like an old guy when I say that. On the internet. The interweb. <laughs> on the on, interwebs. Yeah, I was on social media. And there was this Olympic-level black belt in judo. Mm-hmm. And he went against 10 other just normal black belts, mm-hmm. one after another. And he just kicked all their asses. And it reminded me of the difference between world-class and like experienced. You know I'm what I mean? saying they're they, they oh, were all other black belt guys, so they're not like a bunch of chumps. No, but it's, it's so this is what it's like, right? It's like it's like you guys, like you guys you you like Adam, you play basketball your whole life. Right, right. Mm. You would be a black belt in basketball. But that doesn't mean you're an NBA level. Right. Yeah. No, <laughs> you know what no, I'm good analogy. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys ever done that? Have you ever gone against no, world that's, class? We, we've, yeah. ta- we've talked about that yes. at when Justin worked for me, we we closed down. And I think we've brought this up on the show. I felt like a toddler. We closed it. And the, the irony of this, though, is they weren't even world-class basketball players. They, <laughs> no. were, they were world-class football, in, players. football players. Yeah. But, yeah. Just, <laughs> but just because that just shows you the, the level difference, the athleticism of them. I mean, we had – all of us guys yeah. had played basketball. Not, none of us were NBA or anybody even, you know, Division One college players. But some guys played in college. A lot of us I played. I mean, that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, were, we all like to with think my, we were pretty awesome. My layups. And we played, uh, you know, five of the 49ers. And, dude, we just got lit. And they weren't even that good, but they were just so – on another level, athletically, mm-hmm. yeah, that the stuff that they, the way they could just get up physically, the court they and just, yeah, rebound the ball, the things that really matter, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying like they could do that. Dude, they're the- making shots from half court. Yeah, it was <laughs> like, like wee. <laughs> no I'm way. like, what is happening? And then you know, and then you can't stop them like running into the paint. Dude, yeah. when I did when I was doing jujitsu really uh, consistently, there was this guy that came in totally new, had no experience with jujitsu. Big dude. He was like 340 pound, white dude, tall. And I remember when we're doing the warm ups in jujitsu, they make you do things like you do judo rolls and you do cartwheels and you do all these drills and stuff. And I'm, you know, you see a big 340 pound dude and you're, you don't assume that they can do all this stuff, right? Yeah. This dude was doing one armed, you know, uh, cartwheels and he didn't know how to do a judo roll, saw one, decided he would try it and did it. And I remember looking at him like, what is going on here? 
He was a Canadian. He played uh, pro football in in Canada. Uh-huh. So he wasn't even NFL. He was just a pro in yeah. Canada. But I couldn't believe how athletic he yeah. was. And then when you would go against him, and jiu-jitsu is very technical, so it's he he didn't know what to do, so he would still get beat by black. But he was so strong and athletic that you knew as soon as he learned a little bit of something, you were oh, in trouble, super dude. dangerous. Yeah. yeah, there's been a few football players that have crossed over into MMA. Like I remember when Herschel Walker was doing it through like Strike Force and just yeah. demolishing people. And he's like, what was he like fifty something yeah. like, when he got in? I was like, man, it's, yeah. it's just like he's just been athletic his whole life. Yeah. Well, I've, I've gone against world class, uh, you know, jujitsu and judo guys, and I, I only got up to purple. I wasn't even a black belt. I was decent, you know, I was decent in my club, um, but I wasn't world class or anything like that. And I remember going against some of these guys, and it was like they would just touch you, and you you would hurt. Yeah. They were just so exceptionally good. Now, being somebody who's gone through that, now do you feel like you're like at your level, not world class cuz we're not we we all My agree, level. Yeah, like your level of guys that within within your community or that are all that are all doing rolling around and stuff. Is there a, is there a clear difference between like purple and black? I mean, is it like that? If if there is if, it as clearing as the what you just explained with the black belt to the world class belt. So I, the the thing about jujitsu that's interesting is that it takes a long time uh, to progress. So it would take you of consistent, good training. And I say consistent, like three days a week or more, um, all the time competing. Take you anywhere between three to five years to to get a, a purple belt for most people. Sometimes people take longer. But if you're really good, about three years, the 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 like exceptional exceptional jujitsu guys, maybe a little bit faster. Those are the world class guys. But usually it's around that long. So by the time you're a purple belt, you've been doing it for oh, a long wow. time. Whereas other martial arts, now is, you could get a black belt in that period of time. Okay, so then what's the what's the time frame now to go from from purple to black? Just to go from purple to black would be like another three four years. Wow. Yeah, and it goes. This is these are the belts. It goes white, blue, purple, uh, brown, black. There's not very many belts. So it takes a long time to progress. The difference between a, a purple and a black belt is just finesse. A black belt is setting you up three, four moves in advance, whereas a purple belt is kind of forcing their their setups a little bit. Mm. Um, and then there's a big difference between a purple belt who's just got one and one who's had one now, for a while. Now, is there is it is it done so well? Like, is it so accurate? You feel that it's very rare that you see a a, a brown or black belt lose to a purple belt. It's not super rare, but it's 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 not super common either. Um, because it can, of course there's levels, right? So you could be I've beaten black belts as a purple belt, not often, but I have beat them, and usually it was because I was just stronger. So my strength kind of I was able to add that to the mix. Mm-hmm. But usually I would get you know I'd say eight or nine out of ten times a black belt would would take me out. And I would imagine so when you're rolling around like that, you're you're not talking about competitions where you've met black you beat black guys because you would be within your weight class, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's the other thing too about jujitsu is because it's so full contact and you're training. When you progress, even if you don't compete, you you fight. You're fighting all the time. Yeah. So you're you're good. You're you're going to be pretty damn pretty damn good. But the same thing though, the difference between world class and just your regular, I'm good in my club. Whole different, it's Dude, a whole the other whole universe. term world class. You know, the my favorite is uh, these entertainment trainers, you know, out there that are like mainstream. That the, when they <laughs> when they announce them, world class trainer, <laughs> they like just got like their one certification yeah. just to you know protect themselves. They're like, no, you fit the part, yeah, yeah, you're world class yeah. now. Yeah, now, in, you know, in, now, ironically, like, fuck. now that's more common the other way. It's rare that you see you meet a world class trainer and they're truly a world class trainer never yeah that nobody calls themselves that like, <laughs> what an asshole yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, i don't say yeah. that creator of urban cowboy hip-hop class you know? he's world class yeah. the, <laughs> most the, po- ass. the most popular dvd yeah. sales he fitness. can build an ass like you've never seen you, you know why because real world class trainers or whatever i hate that term but for, you know that we're applying it this way but real world class trainers would be boring because the, you know the, the, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't be super exciting. Like I want to lose thirty pounds. What yeah. do I do? Because they've reduced it all to the simple things that actually work. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here's None what we're gonna do. Flashy shit. We're gonna do an assessment first. Yeah. Then we're gonna do some correctional exercise. So for about 20, 30 minutes. He's world class. <laughs> yeah. I don't want you to get too sore, right? And then yeah. as, as far as diet, let's worry about that in about a month, and then let's see what happens. Like zero, you know, zero media. Oh my god. <laughs> Have, did you guys? Okay, speaking of like black belts and whatnot and all this stuff, like so. Uh, have you guys ever seen, um, uh, man, I was trying to remember his name, Wong, Wong Jack, 
uh, versus Bruce Lee. So, no. like, or heard about it, I should say. Uh, I guess, like, back in the day, they had a scrap uh, because he was like a, a kung fu master and uh, and found out, like, Bruce Lee was training all these, like, you know, white guys and, like, people that, uh, you know, weren't in the inner circle of martial arts mm. and all this stuff and, got you know, got pissed off and, like, challenged him, you know, to... To, to a fight. Oh, I know about this. Yeah. I have heard about it. So Wong Jack, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I'm trying to remember, because I was a huge Bruce Lee fan when I was a kid. He was traditional Chinese Kung Fu. Yes. And Bruce Lee was teaching Kung Fu, but he was teaching his brand, which was very, uh, like it was Wing not Chung, traditional. Yeah, it was, it was more Wing Chun, I think. No, um, it was, uh, well, he called it Jeet Kune Do, yeah. um, but he would integrate boxing he would integrate um, some wrestling moves and just like the dancing that he did with his that that he learned that footwork he learned from boxing right. and they didn't like that yeah so there was a challenge and whoever won got to teach or whatever so there yeah so there's some like debate as to like only because like both camps have different stories right so uh, you know like it, it's so funny in martial arts they try to they try to create these legendary figures out of like you know the the one punch you know death you know, move and all this stuff, like five finger death punch or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and so like, they're trying to, I'm sure they're trying to protect him, but like, uh, I guess he, he whooped his ass. Uh, Who whooped whose ass? Uh, 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 Bruce Lee. Oh, uh, whoops his ass. Bruce Lee. And, the, and to, to the point where the guy like basically got up and like, kind of like ran away. <laughs> and, uh, and so like, and later on, and I guess like Bruce Lee was like, man, that wasn't effective enough. Like his techniques weren't effective enough and it like uh, promoted him to like go learn more mm. like techniques and then incorporate like more of a, uh, yes. uh, uh, you I, know, I, I do remember this styles. and I guess this is when he got into fitness because yeah. it exhausted him. He got yeah. too tired. Got, that's exactly right. He, he got, got too tired. tired yeah. So he became a fitness fanatic. You know, uh -huh. he, he um, Bruce Lee would work with uh, bodybuilders of the time to learn bodybuilding techniques, weightlifters, boxers, mm -hmm. to try and learn the different, you know, and he became a, 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 a like a bodybuilding, uh, uh, like aficionado. He, re he loved lifting weights. He trained his forearms like crazy. That was a big body part that he liked to work on. Pretty cool. There's a book called The Tao of Jeet Kune Do. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys have heard of it. Mm -mm. It's like the philosophy of Jeet Kune Do. Mm -hmm. Really, really cool book. I read that. Was a this a documentary ago. you're watching? Where did no, you? No, this is all. This was an article I read. That uh, it was uh, like all, you know, some all that's interesting, and so like it kind of went into the the backstory of all that. That was like this underground fight that like not a, a lot of people were supposed to know about. Uh, and I think it's more more like saving face because he was like a, a real legit like black belt master, mm. uh, you know, in kung fu. So, but he got his ass. Were you guys big fans when you were kids? Oh yeah, I Bruce Lee was like one of my favorites. Really? I mean, yeah. It is. Yeah, I was a big fan. Of you Bruce weren't Lee. a big fan? No, it, it. I don't think I even got introduced to him until way later. I think I saw Enter the Dragon like uh, I want to say like after high school even. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. So I really didn't follow. I, you know, I don't. It just my friends weren't into that. We weren't into it. I was never. I where I grew up, there was ne there was. I grew up small town, so there wasn't even like a martial arts mm. studio. So it's like my school that I went to. Like there wasn't kids that were doing that. So it wasn't even a thing that you talked about. Like dude, Bruce you know, sports as Kato. I was always like, what the hell? Like, why isn't he the main superhero? Oh. He's whooping everybody's ass for this guy. Oh, you watched the Green Hornet. Green whatever? Hornet. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was silly. He, he was. I was a huge fan. Uh, Enter the Dragon was one of those movies that. When oh, you're a yeah. kid, completely changed my life. It was so awesome. Oh, yeah. Then, it, yeah, then a game of death. Was that the one with Chuck Norris in it? Which one was that? Yes, no, that um, the one with Chuck Norris uh, was. Into the uh, Dragons, the one where he like he takes time, he like whoops everybody's ass. Yeah, out. like yeah. levels of it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, okay. No, Return of the Dragon, I think, is the one where he fights uh, Chuck Norris. Okay, that's where they where they All right, yeah. present the different fighters. That's where he grabs his chest there and like pulls it. <laughs> His chest rips it out. Yeah. Uh, you know, change, and he was, I mean, I thought he was super jacked, right? I mean, he was obviously a small dude, but he was, he would do the lat spread. So, in, you know, when he would, like, prepare for his fights, he'd do this big lat spread oh, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, he, he Flex Wheeler, was uh, what inspired by Bruce Lee. Oh, become, Flex was inspi inspired by him. Okay. Yeah, was inspired by him to become uh, a martial artist. I loved reading about him and his training and his philosophies. He was the first, I guess, the original mixed martial artist in the sense that he would... I know he watched uh, Muhammad Ali and learned from his footwork. So if you watch some his martial arts films and the way he dances and moves, mm -hmm. he picked that up from boxing. That's not a kung fu, you know, way of moving. Interesting. And in Jeet Kune Do, um, you guys got me going now. Oh, yeah. uh, one of the one of his hallmark moves was to intercept um, your punches and kicks. 
So he would do these short kicks and punches to stop a kick or punch from mm. coming towards you. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I, know. I was into it too, Sal. Don't worry. I know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's super cool. No, it, it was cool. I just didn't, I didn't get introduced to it until way later. And, and if, you know, that's, I think, doesn't that matter as a kid? Like, yes. what point in your life does something make an impression on you? Yes. Yeah. Like I was, our, I was already too cool, you know, with myself by that time <laughs> to, to, to like fall in love with it. But if I came across that when I was like in sixth grade, yeah. probably when you guys did right it probably would have made this huge impression on me you know yeah, so. fist of fury that's another good yeah, one that was a great yeah, one yeah. anyway did you guys hear that they're changing the name of uh of cracker jacks <laughs> yes i did dude. <laughs> they're changing the name of everything that, that's right now it's gotta be a, a joke uncle, yeah. ben, uncle ben's rice is getting changed and jemima's getting yeah. changed quaker yeah. oats is getting changed yeah so now they're changing cracker jacks to caucasian jacks so caucasian it's like <laughs> jacks <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Stupid. too too yeah. offensive. That is not real. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, I'm sitting back watching all this, and I'm like, meanwhile, the most stereotypically terrible, you know, video game of all time continues to exist. Super Mario Brothers. Oh, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> yeah, plumber with Italian a big mustache. Plumbers, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the hell's going on here? Anyway, I'm like whatever. Pizza, I'm, I'm like whatever about all of it, dude. Yeah. It's like I, I guess if you think it's necessary. We're talking about Lucky Charms, dude. Yeah. That's that's the worst. That's also terrible. Yeah, now, I, I, this whole thing's going on. I, did you know the history of Aunt Jemima? I read this. I don't know if this is true. Maybe Doug can look this up. So apparently, she was a slave. Yeah. She then was freed, and then uh, be, be, I think she was one of the first um, African American millionaires, and because she sold her company. To whoever owns, well, she Jemima. was she wasn't the first wow. because I know the first one of the first. Yeah, I know the first was the the girl that I that they did Netflix did a documentary on. Oh yeah, the Ru hair. Damn yes, it. what's her name? Madam? Uh, no, I'm Madam. Um, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, that that was really good. Did you watch that series? I did. She's a hero of mine. I can't believe I forgot her name. Yeah, that's uh, it, it'll really come to me. It'll come to me. But yeah, so she was uh, a very successful business person, apparently. And uh, that's and then she sold her brand, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Doug wow. again. So why would you want to remove her from the brand? I think because it presents, the, the, the argument is it presents a stereotype. Uh, um, so that's why they're trying to- I know. wonder if the family gets a say in that. Like- mm -hmm. I yeah. don't even know if they still make any money off of it or if they just sold. Oh, they just sold the whole rights of it. Uh -huh. and oh, it is owned by somebody else. Oh, you know what I think so I did? Like Nabisco or no, something like that. No, Pepsi I think owns it. I think Pepsi owns them and Quaker, I believe. Oh, I think really? What, I think I read that. Yeah. So you're probably right. It's But still, I feel like the fa it's the family's name. Yeah. I would hope that and they the would. the history behind it? I like, would hope they would be able to have some say in that mm -hmm. or at least be able to voice their opinion on that. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess. Well, all of history is being twisted and like changed well, history's uh, right in front of us. History, Madam C.J. Jay Walker was the, yes, the other one, by yes, the way. Yes, yes, um, yes. History's fucked up. It just is. Yeah. And I don't care. This is the truth. There's no convenient. Uh, uh, yeah, you can't like just cherry pick. You got to take it all in. Here's the problem. If you go back, so if you believe that humans uh, progress, we progress our idea generally. In some ways, we fuck up. But if you look at the whole continuum of human evolution, um, we tend to progress the way we think. We tend to progress the way we treat people. And treat each other and in, in, in the way we think about things. So you can't if you judge history uh and use the context of today, you're always gonna find fucked up shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you go ahead, Doug. I was gonna say Aunt Jemima is actually not a real person. Oh, okay. Uh, so the woman uh that was the first model for the brand was a former slave. Mm, okay. So yeah, I don't think Aunt Jemima ever existed, nor did Aunt Jemima make a lot of money. Oh, geez. <laughs> she's definitely. That was the totally. She's well, definitely. Well, the, I, think, I, got, I, got, I think we bought, debunked that one. I got trolled <laughs> big time. But what, but what I was going to say is, you go back in time, you're going to find a lot of. I mean, you know, children used to work in, in factories, and parents used to beat the shit out of the kids, and that was the way you raised them, and. Husbands and wives were crazy. Well, and there's a lot of really bad people that are revered for other things. Yeah, well, that's most, what you. That's what I you. Know. That's what you have to be careful of too, right? I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, I and this is a different analogy. We're talking about history, but think of it like even in sports. That's why I always think it's weird when we. We just try it. We de try and defame and ta tear somebody down because they're not a great person, but they're fucking. I don't watch people, and and idolize people. Because uh, and who they are as their character based off of what they what, whatever they did great in history, whether that was they scored the most three pointers in the yeah. fucking NBA ever. Like, sure, that's awesome. He's awesome to watch at his crap. I don't fucking know how he treats his wife. I don't know how yeah. he talks to his kids. Right. I don't know what his beliefs are. I, I like. I'm not gonna like stand by someone. And if he's a if he's not a bad person, okay, maybe I don't buy his jersey now, and you can voice that. But to like try and 
tear someone down or destroy something because of that. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I just, I can't, I don't get on board. Well, I think human beings. I think if you go in that, and again, there were a lot of terrible, uh, historically speaking, and especially in the context of today, there was a lot of terrible shit. But if you go down that road, um, nobody's safe. There is no historical figure that's safe. Yeah. From that kind of uh, of scrutiny, um, and again, I don't even know if any of us are safe. You know, if if everybody was followed around by a camera, if everybody's text messages and in, in, in conversations were recorded, and porn searches, yeah, and well, what? It's all, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, all, I mean, that would say a lot. It would tell a lot. I think so. I think. I mean, for sure, <laughs> right? But variety. Yeah, yeah but, you know, I mean, it's. I think it's you get my point. Life. I mean, look, you know what the human human nature is that if somebody's good at something, we t- we like them before it, and then we tend to think that we then like. Then you them just as, elevate them on a pedestal. Well, yeah. look, it's at, called the, it's called the halo effect. Yeah. It's a yeah, true thing. Yeah. Look at Chris, no, Chris D- uh, D'Elia. Yeah. You know. Look what happened with him. Well, a- and Chris D'Elia, I loved as a comic. I've seen him twice live. I think he's hilarious. He's then so when I hear about this funny. stuff, I almost find myself instinctually wanting to. You want to like, yeah, like defend, justify, him. yeah, you anything. Know? But yeah, you don't know all the details. You don't know, you know, the character behind these people. Like you just don't know that. So, but that's why too. Like when somebody gets accused of something, I still want. I want to hear all the facts as they roll out. Well, he and, finally, and came, he finally came out right he said something in response to it and the response was that he got catfished really mm. yeah so it'll be interesting to see how everything unfolds yeah you know i have yeah. my own bias dude against celebrities now it's starting to become like a terrible bias. well here's, the, here's i automatically think celebrities remember are when we terrible gave, people remember when we yeah. gave the, the the video game analogy you know of like you you know and and i feel like it, this is how it is in life right if you put if you become the the greatest at anything or one of the greatest or world class at anything the amount of dedication, the amount of hours, energy, effort, brain power, thought that goes into becoming this world class whatever actor, world class athlete, whatever you want to say, it's in. It has to be almost impossible to not give somewhere else. Right. You know, you didn't do a lot of development on your personal character, your communication skills, your relationship skills. Yeah, you're a terrible husband or wife. Right. Or you, like you know, more than likely, you you cared so much about being great at that thing that it you. It, you you give a, you give up a little bit in the other areas. I, I think that's almost always right. I think it's yeah. more rare yeah. that you meet somebody who is world class or special at something, and then all, they're also this amazing fucking yeah. human being. I mean, those are the people that go down in history forever, and we talk about. But they're that's so rare. I think it's more common the other way that you someone's great at something. Ah, they probably suck at a lot of other things. You well, know? I mean, people are humans are super flawed. There's a lot of bad people that are out there. But like I going back to Chris, you know, Delia. I when I heard about all this stuff, first of all, if it's true, the guy's obviously a, a terrible creep. I mean, if any man talked to my daughter that way in, at the age of sixteen, um, you know, God forbid, I find the guy, right? Right. Um, you're, you're a disgusting human being. But what's weird about it is I find my own psychology get fucked with because I like the guy so much for his comedy. I think he's hilarious. I've watched him, all of his specials. And so I have this without realizing I create this mental bias. Yeah, and I think, oh, he's a cool, he's a great guy. I can't, I would love to hang yeah. out with him. Now you got to check yourself. Yeah, that. he's super cool. Then I read this thing and I and immediately I want to defend him. Yeah. Immediately I think to myself like this can't be true. Yeah, Chris D'Elia's, he's hilarious. Well, well of course of, it could be true. He could be a funny creep. I know. <laughs> you know and there's also, I mean, there's a lot of comics out there that like a lot of what gives them, you know, their their humor is just some of their fucked up tendencies. You mm-hmm. know, it's just there's some darkness in there that, uh, you know, they're trying to, to, to deal with. And I, I've just seen that knowing like uh, certain comedians and seeing certain things and allegations and things come up with that, you know, in that in that area. But yeah, dude, you, it is. It's tough because, and, I, and I'm sure everybody has that. You know, everybody has that person that they're just like, oh, I love that. I, and they, they just want to ignore the, well, all these other things going on. Well, it's not that. even that it's ignored. It's, you know, the book that I'm reading actually gets into this. They do a cool little test and they're, they're talking about it for an example of like, okay, they give you, the, so the ideas are going to give you four adjectives, but they release two of the first adjectives for you. And then your job is to say what you think about this person as a leader, right? So the first one is, you know, strong and highly intelligent, you know, mm-hmm. would, you know, do you think that person would be a good leader? And your first initial right away, yeah. you guys thought something in your head. Yeah. And then the next two adjectives are corrupt and you know manipulative right and then now do you still believe that person's a good leader now your now your brain all of a sudden changes your opinion on that person because you have two new facts or adjectives about that person that's what's happening is right now the the only two adjectives you have is funny 
you know, likable. You know, those right. are the two things that you have of him because that's all the information that you've been presented. It also presents. It also takes those two adjectives and now makes them uh, uh, like almost like uh, tools for bad. For example, you said strong and intelligent. Now that I know that the person's corrupt, exactly strong and intelligent to be corrupt. And oh wow, they're corrupt even, and manipulative they're, things. They're going to be even more corrupt. Right, Chris D'Elia, right. Would you say funny and likable? Oh, that's great. And he fucking hits on or tries to hook up with underage girls. You right Oh away. my God, he's using those skills yes. to talk to these girls. Exactly. And now right. it makes him an even worse person. That's more, what's more devious. That's what's yeah. fascinating when you think about how the brain operates and works. And so, you know, you, you can only get so mad at people for thinking that way because that's we evolved to do that. Mm -hmm. you know, our, our brain is doing such high high levels of math at all times. Mm. All times, nonstop. And you you rely on that that first system of the brain to get you through your day. Mm -hmm. If you had to like think logically about every maneuver, everything you say, you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to move. Exactly, you would never get you would never get take a first well, that's step. That's why it's so easy to just join camps, to, to to join biases and join groups of people that think just one way. And you're like, oh, cool, yeah, you know, they all think this, so it's got to be the way I think too. No, right. it's it's totally true. One of the reasons why this country, you know worked so well in the early days when when literally if you came here you were an american there were no it was so open right this is back when you know when when people from all over europe and other countries would just come in and they would just let them in and you figured different religions different peoples you know germans italians jewish irish people think oh they're all white they were very different um you know remember europe had two world wars so they were not at all the same just because they had the same skin color how did they all get along because they all valued one common thing, which was this concept of liberty, which was yeah. don't bother me. I won't bother you. If Pursuit we want to work happiness. together, if I want to work with you, we can work together. We can agree on these different things. That's why it, it, it kind of worked because you have to have that. You have to have that similar one similar thing that you agree on. Yeah. Otherwise, you make lots of assumptions and then, oh, you know, you run into a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of different problems. But I don't know, man. So my my assumption now with the celebrities is that they're all, and I'm trying to check it, you know. But as soon as I, I see a celebrity, I automatically think, <laughs> yeah, it's tough. You're but... a, you know you're a creep. Did you know that that I didn't know this that sex traffickers? How many of them have been getting caught and arrested in recent years? Oh yeah, oh, I, I actually did I see saw it. those stats. I saw the stats on that. In fact, it was I don't remember what what tens else. of thousands. Yeah, yeah. Like they're doing Versus crazy. Before it was in the hundreds, right? It was a hundreds or a thousand a year. Now it's like ten, twenty, thirty thousand. Like they're apparently like there's they're, a massive crackdown going on. There's a huge crackdown. Which is great. Which yeah. makes me. Did you guys the Epstein documentary? Did you guys yeah. watch that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my I god. I didn't make it all the way through. It, that's a tough one to just be like, oh, I'm gonna have some popcorn. I'm gonna, oh, dude. <laughs> like, like, oh my god. Like it's there's some dark shit in there, but. It, 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 what frustrates me is it. I guess they call it like a fluff piece where they just like really target like one individual as like the ultimate evil in this whole operation. And you're just like, no, dude, yeah. where's all these other really powerful people in the world that were strung well, in and involved in this that, shit? Well, that's the part that tripped me out about that documentary was how this fool got the FBI to turn it off. Dude, how yeah. the fuck is that? Like, it's, you know one, it's one thing to corrupt. Like a local police, because maybe you went to high school with them and your buddies, and what, or you guys were way homies before he became a cop and you became a pedophile, and so then you've worked something out to where you're like, you know, we're boys. You take care of me, and it's local. Yeah. But for shit to, from a local to get up to FBI and FBI to like, no, like, dr yeah. like, how does that happen? Yeah, that's crazy. Bro, you know how that happens? This is how it happens. You find somebody that wants to be as disgusting as you are. Yeah, that level. And now they're in on it with you. Yeah. Yep. Now you got something on them. They got something on you, and you protect each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how they did it. Did and he you, killed himself. Have, Get oh, the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's such the stupidest thing ever in my life. Can't, I can't handle myself anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be the. That's yeah, right. such. Nobody believes that. <laughs> Why isn't anybody losing their mind over that? You know what I mean? I don't know. Get the fuck out because of here. Because it's not. Promoted in the media, and well, no, and here's the thing: you want to talk about some real systemic shit. That's some real dude. Talk about for someone like that to get away for that long, FBI to turn a blind eye to him to get murdered in full fucking protection, where he's supposed to be safe as can be, dude. How the fuck is like? Did the, you see that? Yeah. Have you seen the flight logs to his little island? 
Yeah. Have you seen this? No. Oh, dude, yeah, Bill yeah. Clinton was on that flight, on that on a plane to his island. I don't know how many times. I think over a dozen times. Mm -hmm. Several of which were his. He signed off royal his, family members yeah. from overseas. He signed off his oh, secret dude. his secret service to not come. You know. You know that. You know that he actually had a secret service not follow along, which is a big deal for either a president or ex president. Yeah. Is to tell the secret service, no, you stay back. I'm going to go on my own. Something like a dozen or more times. You're right. One of the one of the uh, the royal families, uh, major hedge fund managers, politicians from around the world, um, you know, religious leaders. Dude, there it, is a web there. It's disgusting. It's that that's that's what evil is. Dude, that, right. That's what evil looks like. Everybody wants to shy away from that topic, but that is evil right do you, there. Do, right you, do you guys think that that maybe there's some something's about to be dropped? I one about all that. I yeah. one hundred. I think the reason why Trump is so fucking cocky and arrogant. Is because I think that so I watched I just just recently watched um, that old uh, I think 2018 they did a documentary Netflix did and it's totally slighted right it's like it is they made that documentary to make him look like a puke the one thing that I really took from it was holy shit is Donald connected to everybody yeah mm -hmm. maybe one of the most connected presidents we've ever had as far as knowing people and people have got that of of great power and so my theory is that this motherfucker has got some serious dirt or has some serious shit that he can drop, and I think that's what makes him so fucking cocky is because he knows it. Is he, know, he knows that at the end of the day, hate me, whatever whatever you want to say about me, you guys can do everything, do all this crazy shit to make me look bad, but when October comes around, Dude, I think it's going to I, I don't think know. we're going to see some what crazy kind, shit come out. So for people who don't know, you know, of course, yeah, election we'll times in November, there's something called an October surprise where they tend to drop – some crazy, you know, news or whatever to, to, to swing, you know, votes one direction or another. That's, what mm -hmm. the, that's why there's a name for it. Mm -hmm. With everything that's been going on this whole year, this this surprise how, how can is going to have to be- crazy? Yeah, like, <laughs> what are they going to say, uh, dude? Well, that's why I think that. I'm yeah. just exhausted. Well, I'll, it's crazy. I'll tell you some crazy stuff. So they have recorded, maybe this is the October surprise, they have recorded these radio signals from like 500 you know, billion miles or, or light years away or something like that. These 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 radio signals that seem to be coming from m maybe life. What? I don't. Yeah, like from from the Sirius uh, 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 star. So there's a there's a there's a, a repeating rhythm of fast radio bursts emanating from an outknown oh, excuse me unknown source outside of our galaxy, 500 million light years away, and it's consistent in the way it's it's repeating itself. They're they, they're really having trouble trying to attach it to a natural phenomena. Dude. So the what? Is, what? <laughs> you, you know what's unfortunate about that? That would have been insano news, like way back in the day, with, with that movie came out, like Signs or, or a yeah. Signal, or with Jodie Foster. Yeah, remember yeah. that whole thing? Yeah. That was they're so passionate about trying to like find contact. It was called contact. Well, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> good job, Justin. <laughs> yeah, it just came to me. Well, along those <laughs> lines, a professor of astrophysics at the University of Nottingham, uh, his name is Christopher uh, Consulis. Um, he said that, this is his quote, there should be at least a few dozen active civilizations in our galaxy under the assumption that it takes 5 billion years for intelligent life to form on other planets as it did on Earth. So they're looking at it as uh, in terms of evolution, but on a cosmic scale. And they're using a calculation they're, causing the, they're calling the astrobiological Copernican limit. What? So according to this, and, and some scientists are giving this a lot of weight, they're saying, well, according to this, there may be around a dozen, you know, life forms, um, uh, intelligent life forms in our own galaxy. Crazy. <laughs> it's so Get mind dude. blowing. Get the fuck dude. out of here. Well, because I know that they had found uh, bacteria uh, on a comet, and they 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 had found that it, it, there's certain strains that can live, uh, you know, in the vacuum of space, and they can do they can be just fine. And then once they hit, uh, you know, a planet, it's like. Now it, the whole process starts over. Again. Panspermia, pan, pan or whatever. But well, it, they've already shown that that's a very, well, very likely scenario. Well, think about it this way: What would unite the world uh, right now? Because everybody's so crazy. Aliens. Yeah, like oh shit, we're all gonna yeah, die. Attack of aliens. Let's we, all become. We friends. forget about all of our other stuff going. <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> let's, let's do this. We and are. Well, shell it, it, it is uh, Independence Day is around the corner. Oh no! Oh, what a great that was movie a great that movie. Was. Yeah, Will Smith <laughs> yeah, killed it yeah, in that movie. Yeah. That movie was awesome. So what's that? What was this talk about? This these new flavors. Of what? Magic spoon coming I out? ordered immediately. What is it? Immediately, they have they have honey nut, which okay, cool. 
peanut butter, dude. Bro. Peanut butter, dude. Now we got peanut butter we can mix with chocolate. Oh wow, oh, dude. Oh wow. Happy days, dude. It's, you would be that guy to make chocolate I, milk and peanut butter. <laughs> you, I, would totally... I, I am that guy. <laughs> I would be that guy. So, I am that guy. So when you eat this, Adam, when you have a, a serving, how big is a serving? How many uh, grams of protein? Well, I get. I so I don't do like the serving size. I'm 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 trying to hit like 30 grams of protein from from a bowl. Of that. Right, right. Yeah. So I'm doing. I think that's like two. That's like two and a half servings or two servings, I think, is what will hit that. You have a bowl or yeah, a box. Yeah, Tell let me, me see here. So this this says that three quarters of a cup is the serving that they're using. Right, so I do about two to two and a half of that to, to get me up to 30-something grams. Okay, well, check this out. So three quarters of a cup of Magic Spoon cereal has- Which is not enough. Not, it's small, right? But that's 12 grams of protein. By the way, this is good protein. This is, uh, this is whey protein isolate, milk protein isolate. So it's high-quality protein. So that's 12 grams of protein. Eight grams of carbs, uh, zero grams of sugar, six grams of fat. So if you double that, you got 24 grams of protein, 16 grams of carbs, 220 calories would be a, a double serving. And you have, re and if you put milk in it, right? If you use actual milk in it, you've got more protein than that. That's like a bodybuilder, Dude. like dream snack. You see what they're doing though. I mean, they're going through the Rolodex of all the most amazing cereals. Yeah. And they're like reproducing. It's like, you know, you had the Honey Nut Cheerios. They went that direction. They got, you know, the peanut butter. I, I can't wait for when they combine it, like the, the Reese's version of it, you know, or something like that, or oh, like the, the Lucky Charms. Yeah. Are you, <laughs> have you tried putting on like white bread yet with cereal? And you ever do that when you were a kid? Put cereal on like bread and what? add like. That's weird. Yeah. You never did that? That is weird. Yeah. yeah. I was a stoner I did, before I ever had weed. I, I, I mean, yeah. I did the Lay's, say. Lay's chips on like turkey bologna type sandwiches. Oh. Yeah. You remember that? I you want to you hear it? You, put Lay's, you didn't <laughs> do that? Yeah. 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 You want to hear the grossest sandwich I used that's to make? Like, that's uh, like poor stuff. So I would get it. I know. I feel bad when I make fun of Adam because I, I know. <laughs> like, oh, Adam didn't have a lot. Like I had spam. And the, like, oh. He didn't have a lot except his, his, his parents bought <laughs> he had horses. Ponies, <laughs> but, but he ate like that's yeah, why, bologna that, sandwiches. That's why they didn't have a lot. This is, <laughs> <laughs> they bought horses. What are you guys doing? We got no power, I ate Bob. nothing but peanut butter and jelly, dude. That was my jam. Don't lump me up with their financial decisions, bro. <laughs> I didn't have a lot to say at 12. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, kids. We're all going to skip lunch yeah. for a couple of years, okay? But Don't we got worry horses. About it. We got top ramen and we got horses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I used to make a sandwich. This is gross now. White bread, mayonnaise, American cheese, uh, Lay's potato chips, and spam. You ever have a spam sandwich? <clears throat> no. It's actually pretty disgusting. Good. It's good, uh, but disgusting. Like super salty. Yeah, it's good, but it's. That's like the closest thing to a bologna sandwich, wouldn't you say? Yeah. What the, What is spam? It's just like. Oh, it's just like I don't even know what kind of ham that is, but I feel like it's like ham-ish, you know, like they just smash it all. Well, together isn't bologna where they like they dice up like it the with cartilage salt. and all? It's like everything, right? Like a hot dog. Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, it's like hot dog right. uh, mush. Yeah, you know, it's funny though. Nowadays, everybody's like promoting uh, collagen protein so much. That's bologna. Yeah. It's just a bunch of collagen protein. Yeah. What are the ingredients of spam? Let's see here. It's uh, salt, water, modified potato starch. Sugar, sodium nitrate. Oh, the first ingredient is pork with ham added. Hold on a second. Wait. What's pork with ham what do you added? Mean? What's the difference? Yeah, that's yeah, weird. Yeah. It's like having beef with yeah. with cow added. Yeah. <laughs> it's a substance called pork. Yeah. But, uh, we're going to put some ham in there to make you think it's well, still dude, part of it. When I went to Hawaii, I, I'll tell you what's delicious. I'm, I'll stand by this right now Sp uh, spam and eggs. Mm. Fucking delicious. Have you guys mm. ever had spam? No. Yeah. It's hella good. Yeah, it's a big Hawaii thing. It's yeah. hella good. Mm -mm. Speaking of meat. No, speaking of hella good. What? Let me mm. tell you what I did last night, Doug. What'd you do? So I know Doug is the only one that has the Instapot too, right? Do you guys have the Instapot yet? Uh, yep. No. So I still crock pot. So I pulled, I over the on Sunday, yeah, on Sunday I pulled uh, ribs out to defrost and I was going to barbecue and like Monday got busy, Tuesday got busy. So Katrina uh, tells me, she's like, hey, we need to cook those ribs. And I'm like, fuck, I don't have time to, to, to smoke them. Those take like four hours. She's like, you know, I found a really good recipe on Instapot. I'll, I'll, I'll try it out and see what you think. And I'm like, Instapot ribs? I'm like, uh, I don't know. And that was like all we talked about. And she just did it, right? And I came home. Because she oh, don't do what you say. Yeah, right. She's, she don't, yeah. <laughs> she don't listen, yeah, right? She's so, good. Good for she, you. Yeah. She does the, the ribs in the Instapot. Holy shit good. Hmm. Not, only, not only good, I think she, was, she did it in 30 or 40 minutes. 
So ribs normally take me like four hours to smoke them. What, 30, 40 minutes, and it came out like you slow cooked them? Yes. Like, um, oh, she uses the, the liquid smoke uh, in there to so make it taste like that? No, or? you didn't have, no, you, you just lather it with uh, your favorite barbecue sauce inside mm. inside the Instapot. That's it's, it? And Yes. Oh, wow. And it like sucks in all the juices. I went to pull it out. I grab it, and the bone just comes right out of the thing. I mean, it was like fall off the bone good, dude. It was amazing. What kind of ribs? Damn. Uh, butcher Box. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh. amazing. Speaking of which, oh, Butcher Box has got a wait list. Yeah. They've got a wait list right now because so many people are signing up. Well, we did. Yeah. So I mean, you can get on the wait list. So if you, if you sign up for Butcher Box, get on the wait list. And I'm not sure how long it'll take, uh, but then oh, so worth it though. But then they'll get you your well. Order. So this is what ha so our audience hasn't really heard us talk about them for a long time um, because they they when COVID hit they exploded and they like more than they ever could have imagined to the point where they had to shut it down and turn people away. Yeah. So they they called up and asked us like, hey, I know we're in contract right now, but we can't even get anybody. We can't even help anybody more right now. Can we do something? And we worked out something to where we can extend their contract and all this stuff. But uh, they are now able to start adding some people from the wait list. And so they said, okay, we can resume back to commercials because we're, we're starting to knock people off the wait list. But so if you've wanted to get a, a butcher box or get in on it, make sure. I tell you what, that has been one of the biggest game changers for me with this whole COVID thing going on, why everybody was fighting over the meats and it was stressful to go to grocery stores. Yeah. I mean, being able to get my box. And what I used to have, I used to have it every three months because we were still going shopping in our, ourselves. And we just, we cranked it up to once, once a month now. So do I. Yeah. So I literally have to pick I up. Do a two, I do a $200 box and I get all this grass fed meat and steaks. And I do throw oh, some chicken yeah. in there. Their pork. Have you guys done their heritage pork chops? I've done everything. Oh, you've talked about yeah. that. Dude, yeah, the pork, I'm not a huge fan of pork. I'm not a big fan of pork chops. Uh, uh, Jessica said, why don't you try it? Let's try these out. Throw them in there. Let's see what happens or whatever. Mm. I mean, they're amazing. And it's the her heritage pork has got a, bit, a different flavor, doesn't it? It's yeah. More yeah. of a... I don't know, like a like a sweet, tender flavor or whatever. Yeah, I'm a bit of a fillet snob too. We we cooked them up uh, two days ago, and I, I my kids like they're, they're starting to eat more like steak and stuff because they, like before that we just get them burgers and things like that. But like uh, you know they're starting to eat steaks and. Uh, uh, Everett was like, oh, my God, I want to try that. And I, I was, like, hesitant because, like, you know, filet is, like, you know, that's my favorite cut of meat. You yeah. Know, you Wait, you were hesitant that. to have your, let your kid eat your food? Well, because there was two of them. <laughs> There's one for me, one for Courtney, and then they were going to get the ribeyes, you know, which some people prefer ribeyes. I get that, too, but yeah. I prefer filet. But So I let him have mine, and I, you know, and still the, the ribeye was amazing. But you could just see his face. He was like, oh, like he was so stoked that he got, like, the prime cut That's of what my box is. My box is the the uh, ribeyes, the fillets, the ribs, and chicken, and then the bacon. Yeah. Mm. Those things, like, we eat that so... Because it took me a while to kind of figure out. I haven't had the fillet yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, so it's really good. I, I was trying to find the combination out, right? Because you, you get, a like, a variety box of different things, and there's only so much. You, can, you can't get a whole box of nothing but chicken or what that. You have, to, you have to spread it all out, right? So it took me a while to figure out what, like, what's the perfect combination of what meats do we eat eat on a more regular basis mm -hmm. to justify it being shipped to our house and like that I've we've found that we eat enough bacon, yeah. we eat enough fillets, we eat enough ribeyes and we eat well, enough ribs. I'll tell you I'll tell you what and this has been observed by uh, many many strength coaches and, and bodybuilders and at, for a long time. I don't know if there's really any science or studies to support this I should say, but anecdotally um, if you want to increase your strength and muscle growth, red meat is one of the best foods. You could consume, and uh, so if you ever want to do an experiment with yourself, and grass fed is good, grass fed's better, right? If you, especially if you need a lot of red meat. If you ever want to do an experiment with yourself, try eating more red meat. Uh, replace some of your other meat with red meat. Eat it on a regular basis. See if you don't notice uh, a benefit in terms of strength. First question is from Logan Tyler V. I'm in the last phase of MAPS Aesthetic, and I notice my form breaking down in some of the later reps. But I also feel like lowering the weight is not beneficial either. What suggest suggestions do you have to remedy this? Form over everything. Yeah, lower the mm -hmm. weight. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think this is a good question because I know that I remember. I remember being in this predicament. And I think for many years, uh, I re like refused to lower the weight. I was so – I wanted to lift totally. more. So you want progression. I want to get more. That I would sacrifice the form a little bit to just be able to keep pushing the same weight, you know, So yeah. or even start to dr re drop reps. I So w what you'll see in all the programs is 
the, and there's a reason why this is like we give ranges six to eight, you know, or three to five or eight to 12. And the idea, like when you're following a rep range is I'm trying to, I'm trying to fall like right in the middle of that. And the reason why, is so it gives me a little bit of a buffer because I know sets three and three and four or two even sometimes is going to, I'm not going to be as strong as I was on set one or set two. So hopefully that I can stick with about that weight. So I no longer have to do, if I, if I'm, if the rep range is six to eight, and I'm gauging like for a seven to eight range, that gives me, oh, I might have to do seven on set three, and oh, on set four, I might have to do six, or maybe even five, like one rep less, I give myself that kind of play of like, my rep range is six to eight, I'll keep the weight as long as I can, during that that set, those sets, even if I can just still do five, five's close enough to my six to eight, but if, I, if the weight's getting so heavy, I gotta drop down to three or two, I need, I'm going to reduce my weight. I'm going totally. to I'm going to pull the weight off the bar so I can get closer to the rep range I'm trying to work oh, yeah. in. Although it's important to pay attention to how much you're lifting, just to kind of gauge progress and in, in strength and see how well you're doing, you got to always compare it uh, to the right context. So if 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 I'm going much higher reps, I'm going to use much lighter weight. If I'm going to go deeper in my reps, of course I'm going to be using lighter weight. And and weight is largely arbitrary when it comes to getting your body to respond. Again, you want to pay attention to notice trends, but it's okay to go much lighter. This this really became a big deal for me when I started when I stopped working out in gyms and I started working out in my own studio and then my own garage. I noticed when I'd work out and then I noticed this much later, of course in hindsight, when I'd work out in gyms, it was a bigger deal to me to have the big wheel on the bar or it was a bigger deal for me to use a certain amount of weight. So I would sacrifice form so true. for my ego. Mm -hmm. When I started working out in my studio, you know, this is back when I had my personal training studio, middle of the day, you know, I might have one or two trainers training clients, really don't care if they see me lifting X amount of weight or whatever. I started to slowly not give a shit about how much weight was on the bar. Mm -hmm. And I started to focus on form. Same thing now that I work in the garage, I grab the dumbbells or I use the weight that allows me to perform good form with the target number of reps. And that's what's going to give you better results because bad form with heavy weight is not as effective as perfect form with lighter weight. So this whole, the second part of this question I feel like lowering the weight is not beneficial either. That is your ego uh, talking because it is beneficial if it makes your form better. I remember when I also pieced together the importance and what a game changer manipulating my tempo was. And when that light bulb mm -hmm. went off for me too, that's my I, my thought process. would be, And I, I used to teach clients this. If I hand you a weight and you know, let's say I say we're working 12 to 15 reps – and you realize on rep, you know, 12 already that this is still pretty easy. You could probably do 20 reps. Like instead of repping out 20 reps or getting even heavier weight, those last three, those last three reps, slow your tempo way down. Make it harder. Make it harder. Mm -hmm. You take it. You, if you're doing a cadence right through the first eight to 10 reps and the, the cadence is about the same, like how fast you're moving the bar up and down. Right. And then all of a sudden you realize it's still pretty easy for you as you're getting close to that range you're trying to get in. Slow it way down. Mm -hmm. Slow it down to four, five, six seconds on the eccentric portion of the exercise and watch the benefits you get from that. And what's great about that is that because you've slowed that tempo down and you don't have to add weight to that, you're increasing the intensity. That's the signal the body recognizes. It doesn't know that there's 75 or 125 on the bar. It, it takes the perceived stress that it's getting from the body. You can manipulate that, progressively overload that, like the episode we talk about, by manipulating the tempo. Yeah. So just si simply slowing down, keeping the lighter weight, and slowing the tempo down for the last two reps is a great way to increase the intensity. Yeah, you know, for me, uh, going through hypertrophy-type training, uh, I've always looked at it more as – practicing those movements uh, to make me better going into, you know, when I change it back up to like the one to five rep range where I'm really doing like full force output to try and like move some heavy weight. Uh, so, you, you know, some people they'll go through that and try to get a nice pump and like that's, you know, their identity is trying to like lift heavy weights within that range. But I mean, that's never been my thing specifically, but I know the benefit of it. So I, I honestly, I'll take my, my time, my sweet time, you know, like, uh, 
lower the weight substantially so that way I'm paying attention to every little compensation that happens along the way. So I'm really just honing and refining and practicing, uh, you know, these movements so I get more effective, more efficient, uh, then going back into my my favorite repetition. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you an example, right? I could do um, a set of curls with, let's say, 45 or 50-pound dumbbells, and I can give myself a good workout. I could give myself a great workout with 20-pound dumbbells. I could do it in the same amount of reps, too. I could slow them down, squeeze, concentrate, make the weight feel heavier. This is a very important skill to learn if you want to train long-term. If you want long-term results and success, you got to learn this because sometimes, many times, it's smarter to go lighter than it is to go heavier. And, of course, changing and mixing things up always gets the body to respond better because always pushing weight, 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 at some point you're going to hit a limit and what's going to end up happening, you hurt yourself. So this is an important skill to learn. Next question is from Connie Chiwa. Similar to mini cuts, can I alternate short periods of HIT training with more traditional res resistance training sessions to keep my body from adapting to the intensity of HIT over time? How frequently would you rotate hit training through your programming? Yeah, it's a good question, yeah. and I know it's popping up. Hello, Doug. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Yeah, yeah, said it wrong though. Sorry. Konnichiwa. Uh, uh, I know this is coming up because we have, uh, you know, Maps Hit is is half off, so we're getting a lot of questions around high intensity interval training, and also because high intensity interval training is very popular for uh, fat burn or for calorie burn um, in a twenty five minute hit session or twenty minute hip se hit session. You're going to burn as many calories as you would with a 50-minute, you know, traditional resistance training session or hour resistance training session or an hour of, of steady-state cardio. It's just very effective uh, at burning lots of calories, and it's a great fat-burning method of training. So a lot of people are asking questions about this, and they're worried about the adaptation that happens from HIT. You can definitely alternate HIT with traditional strength training. But we, I mean, I tend to make the argument that it's better to stay in one, get good at it, and then move to something else. Now, our program maps hits about six weeks long. I think you can focus on HIT training from anywhere between three to six or seven weeks, and then probably a good idea to move out and try another, you know, form of training. But let's say you want to do HIT all the time. Mm. Can you throw HIT in occasionally um, to get those calorie burning effects. Absolutely. You definitely can. I would not recommend doing hit. It depends on the person, but I wouldn't recommend doing hit more than once or twice a week um, in, in place of other traditional resistance training uh, type, uh, you know, workouts. I, you know, and here's the thing that's cool about this. I don't think there's a, a right or a wrong answer in this situation. Like, uh, you know, the, the key that you just need to remember is that any, any type of type of modality of training, right? Your body eventually gets adapted to it, and you need to move out of it. That's the key. Is like, and the the main people I want to communicate this to are the ones that gravitate to this training. They love this training. I mean, we waited to release a program like this for as long as we did because we know that we know that a lot of people love this short, fast, harder like this, and I sweat more. I feel like, and so they tend clients tend to gravitate towards the circuit training because they feel like it's more beneficial because and and all the research that talks about the fat burning benefits like Sal's talking about. So I, I first want to caution those people. Like if if you love it like that, you know, don't do it longer than about six weeks. Phase out of it and completely go into something else. Now, personally, if you have a really good relationship with understanding like we, how you should move in and out of modalities and not stick to a type of training for too long, if you already understand that really well, I personally like to use hit when it's when it's necessary. Meaning. Today, I have a crazy amount of calls back to back, and there's a window where I have about 45 minutes, like, and that's like literally from you know us doing something here and then this other call. And so it's like, I will definitely can't get a full hour workout to get ready for my workout. It's probably gonna take 10, 15 minutes to do my mobility stuff. Shit, that means I only got about 30 minutes. Great time to do like a hit mm -hmm. if I'm gonna train. If that's gonna be my window of training today, I would adjust like, and I, what I should be doing or what I'm scheduled for is a more maps anabolic. That's I'm following a, a routine like that right now. So I should be doing like a full body hour, good hour long routine. I just, I may not do that. If I do that at that time block, I don't have it. So this is a perfect time for me to intermittently throw in a workout from like the HIT program. Mm -hmm. That's how I like to use it personally. But it, it doesn't mean that it's the better way. It just means that that's kind of how I like to use it is it makes sense when 
I don't always have an hour yeah. or two hour window, you know? It's kind of funny like how it shifted now. Like I I mean I used to gravitate towards hit training quite a bit uh, and mainly in the off season uh like going back into to playing sports, but now I look at hit training as like my sport. <laughs> and it's it's mainly because I I enjoy moving my body, you know, ferociously and like being able to still have athleticism. Uh, so I like to throw it in there like probably more frequently now than I did, you know, before that. But still, I'm still uh, leaning hard on my strength training and then also my mobility practices to reinforce, you know, the, the stability of my joints and everything's in check, uh, which is something that you just need to constantly consider that and check in on, you know, the quality of your 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 joints and are you able to to you know support your body in these because this this is more intensity this is more uh, stress that your body's uh you know going to go through like with with the impact of these types of workouts so if you keep that in mind and it's something that you really enjoy there is a way that you can incorporate it more frequently you just have to be able to know how to weave in and out because you will get adapted you will your body will not benefit as, as greatly from it uh, as you would initially Next question is from Emily Powell, 79. I'm at a point now where I don't always want to be cutting and bulking. How do I set my calories to maintenance? What's the best way to maintain and how do I know I'm staying on track? Hmm. Well, first off, the what we believe to be maintenance is a little bit of an illusion. Um, your body is always gaining and losing a little bit. And over time, if it evens out, that's what appears to be maintenance. So, and you know, I don't always want to be cutting and bulking. It sounds like you don't want to do the aggressive cut and bulk, but ideally the best way to maintain is to figure out how many calories you need every day to kind of stay the same and sometimes eat a little more than that and sometimes eat a little less than that. And now the reason why I'm saying that is because I feel like that's a healthier approach to nutrition versus saying 2,500 calories is my maintenance. This is what I'm going to eat every single day. Nobody lives that way. Well, not only does nobody live that way, that's impossible. Mm. The metabolism is free flowing. Your metabolism is changing day to day. Mm. You know, like it, it is never a straight line 2,500 calories. Right. I mean, and in fact, it probably rarely ever hits an exact calorie amount like 2,500. It's always moving up and down based, and it, stress changes that, sleep changes that, uh, your intensity of your workout changes that. I mean, so many things are going to change how you were eating the last three days versus, you know, all these things are going to keep, are constantly moving and changing the metabolism. So, you know, trying to stick to a number ever, like, and just say that this is my maintenance, I'm going to be around there. I mean, I, I, what I consider maintenance is this, like, I would consider I'm in maintenance right now. I'm not really tracking my calories. I'm not really tracking my food. Um, I, I pay attention to what I'm eating. Like I know, like to me, I know what, like not enough protein kind of looks like what plenty of protein looks like. And so I tend to focus on that since it's an area that's hard for me to hit. And so, okay, I, I'm watching to make sure I get that. And then I'm the, the feedback I'm getting on if I'm in a, in a, a quote unquote bulk or a cut at the time is if I'm putting on body fat and I'm like, okay, I'm definitely eating a surplus right now and oh well, it's okay. I'm probably getting a, a half a percent, a percent. Okay, now it's been 2% body fat I probably put on. And I give myself like this, you know, 4 to 5% ability to fluctuate. Like I I don't care if if I can stay between a, you know, 12 to 15% body fat range uh by not having to, to track and weigh all the time like to me that's i'm maintaining and then if it starts to go too far one way or the other i just course correct mm. and that to, that's what i consider maintenance but it's not a calorie number that i'm even paying attention to or watching i'm a, i'm allowing myself to intuitively eat with knowing that okay there's a good chance i might be over consuming because i'm putting on body fat that's okay if I put on one or two or three percent body fat i'm not out of shape or unhealthy and i know i can re course correct really quick and go the other direction all right. Next question is from Forever Strong Cairo. Should food stamps be banned from use on junk food? Well, this is a this is a, actually a, a fair question because hmm. you're already giving people uh, money and telling them that they can only buy one type of thing with it, right? So when you get a food stamp that literally says it must be used on food, so it's a fair question. But here's why I still don't like it. I don't think. I think if we're going to give people money, it should just be money yeah. to, to spend on, on whatever you want. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, then some people are going to spend it on bad stuff. And this is, again, more attempt at control, right? So, oh, we're going to give you food stamps, but you can only buy it on this kind of food and not that kind of food. 
and, and you know, g- giving them just money means that they're going to even have more freedom. I like that because yes, some people are going to spend it <clears throat> poorly, but there are going to be some people that are going to spend it well. Who knows how they'll yeah. spend it? Maybe they're going to use it on education. Maybe they use it to start a business. Maybe they'll use it for daycare. So no, I'm always in, in favor of less control. I don't like food stamps to begin with. I think people should just get money if we're going to give them anything right. and make them spend it. But if since they already had food stamps, I don't think we should add an additional control. Plus, what is the government going to uh, you know d- you know d- d- decide what junk food is? Um, if you don't think that they're being influenced by mm-hmm. you know yeah, companies brand, by stuff, certain brands, yeah, yeah, yeah like this like, brand's considered healthy, you know, just because they they call it healthy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, if it's if it's this many grams of saturated fat or this many grams of sugar, it's considered you know not junk food or it's considered junk food. Or I remember they considered pizza. Uh, to be uh, you know a vegetable because there's tomato sauce on it you know at one point or whatever mm-hmm. like I don't like this at all it's way too much control already we're controlling people just by giving them money and saying you have to buy just food with this yeah. when you don't know what people really really need you know everybody's lives are very complex if we're gonna give them anything give them money and if it, and by the way that would save us money it would help us eliminate the bureaucracy that administers all this control money oh, just man. give them a check here's your money. Spend it how you want. Well, that's and why I we- always leaned on on charity, like uh, in terms of like I, that's how I look at it too. If I'm giving and supporting something, obviously I'm going to do my homework to see if the you know the foundation, the organization is legit and they're not you know just scamming people. But at that point, you know allow you know allow people to do what they're going to do with it, have the individual freedom rights to you know spend it however they they feel fit you know for their situation, their upbringing, whatever. Uh, you know, like allow people to to be adults and and to make decisions for themselves. Obviously, you want them to make healthy decisions. This is something that we're passionate about. We try to educate people what those healthy decisions might look like. You know, wherever, whatever you're, you know, you're going through, like a, you know, what you're trying to do, lose weight or or, or gain, you know, muscle mass or whatever. We try to like provide information that you know is is best to kind of get you towards those goals. But at the same time, you're you're an individual. You, you have the freedom responsibility of yourself. And, and I feel like that that's what really needs to be highlighted, uh, you, you know, with this kind of stuff. Well, not to mention that, but we also consider this. If you're on food stamps, you're probably in dire straits. Like you're you're somebody who is like at, at the brink of not surviving. And that's that's the idea of food stamps is is government help and support for somebody who can't get by, right? Who mm-hmm. can't who can can't even really feed themselves. They don't they're not making enough money to give them food, and the truth is a lot of junk food goes a lot further than some healthy foods. You know, go buy, go buy a, a good steak or chicken, it, it, you know, buy the pound is expensive. You could buy a, a box of something that'll last in your cupboard forever and is, you know, f- as a tenth twice as many calories, which that's what they need is calories to live and survive, and you're going to get you can get a lot more of it if it's some freaking, you know, corn corn syrup based garbage yeah. it, it's going to be a lot cheaper and so you got to if the if the person who is in real need of this that's getting that support uh, is trying to survive and live and and making a choice uh, or making them force them into only using it for healthier foods which potentially could be more expensive it's kind of defeating the purpose of it now i'm also in the camp of like sal or probably even more hard about it. I, I don't i don't like it at all and I'm somebody who had food stamps, hmm. so I'm not pro food stamp. I'm not for food stamps at all. I think that we're we're pretty creative human beings, and when we're when we're forced into those situations, I think that we we find a way to overcome. And my and of course, this is my own bias. I understand that, and my experience with my family and the people that I've seen around me in this situation, I saw more manipulate it or use it and didn't need it. Uh, than the other way around. You know, I didn't I didn't have as many people in my life that I knew that, oh my God, if they didn't get those food stamps, they might have died. You know, they might not have been able to feed them and their kids and that saved their life and then it got them on, got them up on their feet and then they got a job and then they got themselves going and then they got off food stamps. I don't have a story to share with you that. I have plenty of stories to share on the other of examples of people that have got got it and utilized it because it's something that they can get for free and that it, it did the opposite of motivating them to get them get out and get a job they knew they could get these food stamps and they'd be fine that's what i experienced in, in my life so i'm not even a fan for them period and if we are going to give them okay which we do i definitely don't agree with trying to regulate it even more i it's, just i just think that you're, it's just a bunch of control it's more and more and more control i have no problem uh with people receiving 
help and I have no problem uh, giving uh, people help. I think I think that the you know the test of a good society is how they treat uh, the people um, who need the help the most. I'm a big believer of that. Yeah. Um, but you know if you look at the whole system, if you look at all the 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 benefits that people can receive and you calculate them out, it's a, it's actually quite a bit when you add everything up, right? All the different subsidies and you add in all the different types of help and uh, in, in food stamps and all the other things, it actually uh, amounts to a decent chunk of money. But what people don't realize is to ad- administer all of that through the complex bureaucracies that we've created to to administer Cost all the people. as much, if not more. It, it's, it's a waste of money. Yeah. What if we took all of the money that we spent on that and instead of paying a bureaucracy, we said, you're all fired. We don't need a bunch of government officials handing this out and telling right, saying people, this is for education, this is for food, yeah, this is for- yeah. Here's your check, spend it however you want, and then we got to be okay with people deciding on how they want to live their lives. Right. Now, what's that going to look like? Yes, I'm sure a lot of people are going to make bad decisions because people make bad decisions. But I also think a lot of people are going to use that money much more efficiently. Yeah. You know, if you're the mom, if you're a, a single mom with two kids or three kids and you have food stamps, and you're like, you know what I really need? I really wish I had this money so I could spend it on some childcare, or I really wish I had this money so I could help myself start a business or pay for some education for myself so I could make more money. But I can't do that because, you know, I have to spend it the way that they say, or I have to use it the way they say. I think that's totally silly. It's just more control. And I tell you what, let's just go down that line and see what that would look like. Could you imagine what the government would start to decide what is considered junk food and what is not considered oh, junk food yeah they, re- they've done a real good with the food pyramid they I, <laughs> yeah, terrible yeah. those are the worst people yeah, good job and you don't know from case to case what somebody needs you know like adam said you know what might be considered junk food is processed food processed food has some value it's got long shelf life right a very very long shelf maybe that's what that person needs more at that moment and we're going to tell them that they can and can't spend it on whatever i say this if we're going to help people Eliminate the bureaucracy. That already saves us a ton of money. Give the money to people. We'll figure out whatever that number is. Spend it how you want. God, it's, up you you. Huh? it's up to you. It's up to you. It's your exactly. And see what that looks like. But this, yeah, c- controlling people this way, further controlling them. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm not a big fan of it. Anyway, with that, look, go to mindpumpfree.com. You can check out a lot of free guides and resources to help you with your fitness, your fat loss, your muscle building. There's lots and lots of different resources. Go check them out. Again, they're all totally free. You can also watch the podcast. You don't have to just listen to us. You can watch us on video. Uh, Go to YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. All of our podcasts are audio and video recorded. And finally, if you want to find us on social media, you can find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug, you guessed it, Mind Pump Doug.